Hey guys, it is two degrees Celsius, the snow is falling, and we are about to hit the water. We're gonna bring to you today our tips for some cold weather kiting. Let's do it. So you may be wondering, why are you kiting in cold weather? Well, there's a few reasons. First of all, the beach is way less crowded. You don't have to worry about any swimmers getting in the way. Also, two, you need less wind because cold air is denser, so you need less wind for a great session. Uh, you maintain your skill level, so you're not uh, losing any tricks that you learned in the summer um, in between now and your next vacation. It's also very Canadian, eh? Don't do it. It's cold. Don't do it. Your uh, pecker goes this big and it's, it's, it's painful. Cold water? Oh, it's gonna make my, a few things cold, uh, yes. So our first tip when it comes to cold weather kiteboarding is to dress appropriately. This means getting a nice, high quality, thick wetsuit, five millimeters or thicker. If you can get a wetsuit with the liquid sealed seams, that's even better because you're gonna get less water in your wetsuit. Also, when looking for a cold water wetsuit, look for something that has a really nice lining. As you'll notice on my wetsuit, it's got a nice wool lining in the front and in the back, which keeps my core nice and warm. You should also consider a dry suit as it can be significantly warmer depending on how many layers you wear. The downsides of a dry suit include cost, condensation, and restricted range of motion if you're wearing multiple layers. Dressing in layers is also key. You'll notice that I have a rash guard underneath this. I will also have some neoprene socks in my booties. Don't forget to readjust your bindings after you put your neoprene socks and your foot warmer in. Getting the right gloves is also important because it's your hands that get cold first. These are the four pairs we currently use. The lobster style gloves are by far the warmest in our opinion, but they do take some getting used to. The Billabong ones are the most flexible, but they also provide the least amount of warmth. The other two are good compromises, but it really depends on your personal comfort. In cold conditions, a hoodie is best. I personally dislike hoodies, so I opt for a neoprene hat instead. When choosing a hat, you want to make sure it's snug. This will prevent water from getting in, or worse yet, your hat falling off. One thing that I like to do is change up at home before heading to the beach. That way you stay nice and warm in the car. When you get to the beach, you don't have to contend with the cold air at your back. You're already ready to go, and you waste little time on the beach. That's a pro tip for you. However, that's not always an option, so in these cases where you need to change quickly, our favorite tip is the plastic bag trip. You just put that on your hands, put them on your feet, and you slip into your wetsuit in no time at all. Who knew that these shopping bags would have so many purposes? Watch how quick this goes. No more struggling. <laughs> Something else that I've just started using this year is a windstopper jacket. It keeps me extremely warm. It does a great job of blocking the wind, especially when I'm kiting in just a wetsuit and not a dry suit. And it extends my session probably by 50% if not more. Another tip for those extremely cold days is Vaseline. You want to slather this on any of your exposed skin because it gives you a nice layer of protection from the cold air and the cold water. Keeps your skin from drying out and cracking and getting all nasty. Same goes for your lips. I like to use just a regular lip chop, but again, it keeps them from drying out and just one more thing that'll keep you out on the water a little bit longer. Super important and will help prevent injury, like the one that I just had, <laughs> is to warm up before your sessions. This involves some stretching <laughs> and just general warm up. Get that blood pumping because your body needs it. Your body will take warmth from your hands and your feet in order to keep your core warm. So if you have your blood pumping before you head out in the water, you're gonna be able to stay out on the water just a little bit longer. Another tip for cold water kiting is to bring a couple thermoses to the beach. In our case, we've got one that's full of hot tea. It's always great to have a hot beverage on the beach for a break or when you're done. And then also to another thermos full of just regular hot water. This feels phenomenal when you get out of the water. You pour it in your wetsuit and it gives you that instant satisfaction of heat. Oh, this definitely, this was a tip that we learned a few years ago and it's an essential. Always have hot water on the beach, always. <laughs> also too with that, you can warm up your wetsuit if you drink a lot of water, if you know what I mean. So the big thing with cold water kiteboarding is safety. Safety is obviously a huge part of the sport already, but especially in these harsher conditions. If you never wear a life jacket, get over it. It's time to wear a life jacket. Also, don't go further out than you're comfortable swimming back. That's key. If something goes wrong, you don't want to be far out in this frigid cold water. You will not last that long. 
Another point on safety is you want to be very keenly aware of the conditions as well as the forecast. You don't want any surprise weather popping up on you. And like always, it's best to kite with a buddy. Don't go alone and make sure that people do know where you're going in case that anything goes wrong. You definitely don't want to push it when you're kiting in cold water. When your feet and your hands are getting so cold that they feel like they're not moving, it's probably a sign you should have gotten out like 10 minutes ago. Be very keenly aware of signs of hypothermia. Really don't push it guys, but if you're noticing that your body is shivering, you're slurring your speech, you're like dizzy, you're just not feeling so great, those are like early signs of hypothermia. It's time to get out, time to warm up. Don't push your luck here. Have fun in the cold water, but stay safe. So as I just said, your session is not gonna be as long as you're used to. So if you're planning on learning a new trick or perfecting a new trick, you wanna practice early. The later you wait, the less likely you're gonna get in that time to practice before you get too cold. So have fun. So another tip that we have that's really important and you'll thank me later for it is to plan your exit strategy. What does that mean? It means you don't want to be taking your time packing up and changing on the beach. You want to have everything ready to go. So if that means you just hop in the car and you head home with a towel around you, perfect. If that means that you have to change on the beach, make sure you've got your poncho ready, you've got all of your warm clothes ready to go. They're not buried under a bunch of kite bags in the back of your car. You want to have your hot water, as we mentioned, you pour that down your wetsuit before you change. Um, just think ahead, plan ahead. Um, whatever the situation that you're in, you want to make sure that you are able to get as warm and dry as quickly as possible and you'll just feel that much better. Another tip, especially if you have a bit of a drive to get home after your session, is to bring some garbage bags for your car seats. And pro tip, don't turn your heated seats on. <laughs> Might sound really obvious, but um, may or may not have ruined a heated seat in my past, so just don't do that. <laughs> Last but not least is my favorite cold weather kiteboarding tip. It's very simple. Book a trip down south. That's all. <laughs> That's it for me. My feet are pretty frozen. I'm gonna call it a session. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, leave a comment below, and subscribe for more videos like this. Coming soon. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Woo.